Hello everyone, it's Semi-Retired Bob here. I talk about the carnivore diet, all things related to the carnivore diet, and miscellaneous odds and ends. Today is Friday, which means we are live, and I'm going to answer any questions you might have, talk about whatever you'd like to talk about. Um, first, let's jump right into the comments here. By the way, if you're just arriving, feel free to say hello, hit the like, hit the subscribe. Somebody out there, let me know you can hear me to make sure I got everything working right. I'm pretty sure you can, but it never hurts to check. Got a new channel member, Cheryl Redmond. I don't know if she's in the chat yet or not, but uh, welcome, Cheryl. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about today, I don't even remember who I was watching a few days ago, but... Uh, you know, they were talking about it. Might have even been a Dr. Barry video. He was talking about how, uh, you know, the reason the reason everybody you know stays sick is because, you know, while they're watching TV, eighty percent of the advertising revenue is from big food and big pharma. And that's why, you know, there's no incentive for news people to report anything derogatory because they don't want to bite the hands that feed them. And I thought, it can't really be that high. So for the last couple of days while I'm watching stuff in the evening, whether it be on YouTube or using my Amazon Prime or Pluto TV, which is another good one. Um, and we're going to talk about Pluto TV here in just a minute if you haven't got there. And Teresa made it. Hello, Teresa. Somebody let me know if you can hear me um, or if I'm just talking to air. Um, so I've been, been keeping track. And he was absolutely right. Even on, you know, Pluto TV, all of the commercials I'm getting... I mean, if there's if there's four commercials in a break, three of them will either be food or pharma, and then one other thing. So there's no real incentive to uh, to for the the TV stations to report any of the findings that are out there, and there's been a lot of good research coming down the pipe. We've had, you know, several big um, several big studies that have been recently published, and more are on the way. Um, but we're not going to hear about that on mainstream media because they get all of their money from big food and big pharma. So we need to just realize what we're up against here. But anyway, Pluto TV, for any of you that are cord cutters out there, if you've never actually looked at the app called Pluto TV, just you can get it on your phone, your computer, or you can just log in. You don't even have to get their app if you're using a computer. You can just log in to um, search for Pluto TV and go to their website and start watching TV. They have hundreds of channels that are all free. And it's all good stuff. I mean, me personally, I, I like the, the James Bond channel. But if you happen to be an older person that likes game shows, you know, they have several different game show channels. And there's even like a Bob Barker era Price is Right channel. So you can just sit there and do nothing but watch Bob Barker all day long if you want. I don't actually watch that much TV, but I found it interesting, especially because of that thought experiment I was doing with how many commercials are out there. Let's go ahead and jump into the comments here real quick, see who all is here. We've got Teresa. Hello, Teresa. I'm glad you're here. And Alan's Awesome Keto World is here. Good afternoon to you, Alan. I'm glad you are here. And a couple of people telling me that it sounds good. Sherry Dobbenmeyer is here. She can hear me, and she's just listening. Her hands are busy. Excellent. I'm glad you're here, Sherry. John is here. Hello, John. Uh, let's see who else is here. Oh, Craig is here. 
I'm watching your neighbor's Iowa State play basketball in March Madness. Are you a sports fan? Am I a sports fan? Of course I'm a sports I'm a football fan. Um, and I'm an Ohio State fan. Ohio State did not make it into the tournament due to their horrible middle section of the season. Um, because it's free on CBS's app, I have looked at a little bit. I mean, I saw that Michigan State won today. Um, Illinois did not win, but Northwestern won and some other Big Ten team won. And Purdue's going tonight, but they're one seed against the 16. That's probably not worth my time to check into. So I have casual interest in college basketball, so I will probably look at it a little bit. But I'm not going to set aside huge chunks of time to, to watch it. I know those of you that are college basketball fans, this is the best four days of the year because there were 16 games yesterday and 16 games today for the first round of the tournament. And then eight games tomorrow and eight games on Sunday for this, for the second round of the tournament. Um, so I know those of you that love college basketball are just in basketball heaven right now. Um, but I don't even know who's supposed to be good. Um, I know Purdue's a number one seed and they won the big 10, both the tournament and the regular season. So you got to figure they've got a pretty good shot at going all the way to the Final Four. Other than that, I haven't really kept up with it. Ever since Ohio State's center got hurt midway through the season and they started losing games, um, I haven't really paid that much attention to basketball. Hello, John. How are you doing today? Just wondered if you sleep the same amount of time as you did before you lost your weight. And I'm coming in extremely loud and clear. Well, that's good. Yeah, I do sleep about the same. Um, and I was just talking about this on the Zoom call last night with the person that was there. And uh, I've always been a bifurcated sleeper, which means I sleep for a while, I wake up, and then I go back to bed. Um, but before carnivore, you know, I normally would fall asleep about 9 and then wake up sometime about midnight, and then be up till two or three in the morning, and then go back to bed and sleep for another three hours or so. Um, but even during my sleep windows before carnivore, I would wake up multiple times. And now I don't. I mean, I the only time I've slept a really long time without waking up was that a few days ago when I ended up having like an 11 and a half hour nap that, you know, I was just waiting for the rain to stop so I could go outside and walk and, and woke up much, much later. Um, I hope that answers your question, but I do actually sleep about the same amount of time. I just, ha I feel like I'm getting better sleep now. Sam is here saying hello from Texas. Hello, Sam. I hope everyone's having a great day today. And Sandra is here. I'm glad you're here, Sandra. Hi, from sunny Spokane, Washington. Listening as I prepare food to take to friends this evening. Excellent. Well, I'm glad you're listening. Um, sunny out there. It was really sunny here yesterday. It's been the clouds have been moving in and... I've heard some rain hitting my roof already, even though it's not supposed to rain till later. It's been misting out there for a good couple of hours now. And right now the temperature is 72 degrees. It's very nice out. But as this front pushes on through, it's supposed to, we had a good day yesterday. It was sunny and about 64 or 65. I actually made an outside video that's coming out tomorrow, which is great. Um, but I, I was going to record a video to come out on Sunday today, and the wind has just been howling out there all day. So I may just make a little cooking video um, tonight since a lot of people haven't seen me make a roast. And this one, I was going to go to a friend's birthday party, but um, with the weather coming in, I just decided I didn't want to drive quite that far. Um just to say happy birthday and, and eat a couple of hamburgers. So I have a mostly frozen roast that I'm going to put in the oven after this live stream. And I'll probably record that. It'll just be a 
quick little cooking video for Sunday because I've actually I've been considering not releasing videos on Sunday because they tend not to do very well because everybody releases videos on Sunday and everybody's always busy with other stuff on Sunday. So I'm thinking to give myself a one day break a week. I might stop releasing on Sunday. Not going to happen this week. I, I'll, I'll wait till I get home. Of course, next Sunday, they're probably, you know, there might be a video next Sunday, but that's also my next Sunday is my travel day. I'm going to not two days from now, but nine days from now, I'm going to be all loaded up and ready to go. So that right after church, I can start heading for Ohio. In fact, I was just, I almost was late logging into the stream tonight because my sister sent me an email asking, you know, what did I want her to stock the fridge with? And I said, you know, you can just keep it simple. You know, buy, get three pounds of bacon and three dozen eggs, and that'll get me through six days of food. Um, and I'll have to, you know, augment that. I said, I and if you don't make it to the store, that's fine. I have plenty of spam and, and, uh, barbecue and roast beef chunks and all kinds of stuff um, in my truck that I can make. And I can drive over to the store when I get up there. Um, but if she gets me some food, that'd be great too. That'd be awesome. See here, Marilyn says, Gonzaga Bulldogs are great. Gonzaga has been doing fairly well for the last 10 years or so. They used to be nobody just like all the other smaller schools, but since the, you know, as in all sports, since the reduction in scholarships, and I believe the expanded TV market, you know, used to be, if you wanted to be on TV, there were 15 or 20 schools that you had to go to to get on TV, uh, both football and in basketball, because, you know, they'd show Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, Alabama, Georgia, um, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Texas, Texas A&M, LSU, Florida, USC, UCLA. And those were the schools that you used to, that used to always be on TV with some other smattering thrown in here and there. But since the reduction in scholarships has, you know, leveled the playing field, so to speak, and there's so many more options for TV. I mean, there's, you know, cable stations that, you know, cover the International Horseshoe Championship now because there's there are so many sports channels out there that everybody can actually get on um, TV these days. So you can go to, you know, Podunk University in the middle of nowhere and still get on TV. Um But yeah, Gonzaga's been doing really good. Sorry I got off on that side tangent on sports. Teresa says she, that she sleeps less with 10 times more energy. And Alan says, here in SoCal, it's sunny, but only 61, which is pretty cool for us. Yep, that is fairly cold for Southern California. And Craig has come back with another question. Let's see here. Bob, did you select that t-shirt for St. Patrick's Day? To celebrate the holiday, I had corned beef today. It was a delicious change of pace. Well, I'm not going to have any corned beef. And I thought I had my brighter green, my light green um, YMCA shirt that I was planning on wearing today for St. Patrick's Day. But uh, apparently I wore that. That's the shirt that I was wearing when I went and did my laundry because I found it at the bottom of my laundry bag. So, yes. I did select this as my only other green shirt to wear today. Not that I really care about St. Patrick's Day that much. I don't drink. I don't have any corned beef to make here. I uh, And I'm certainly not Irish. On my mother's side of the family, I'm actually Scottish, not Irish. And on my dad's side of the family, I'm German. So I have no connection to Irish whatsoever. How long of a drive from North Carolina to Ohio? Well, if you're just driving a car 
my friends tell me that they can make it in about eight hours to the Dayton area where I'm going. But um, in my truck, pulling my trailer, I don't drive as fast because I like to stay safe. And so we'll see. I, if I remember right, last year when I left and headed up there, I uh, I think it took me nine and a half or ten hours. Um, so we'll see. Like I said, I don't I don't push it. I don't drive really fast. And as I'm pulling up, uh, there's a couple of mountains I got to go over to get to Ohio from here. And going up mountain, I can keep my speed up. But my, you can literally sit there and watch the gas gauge going down on my truck. So I usually go up the mountains at 45 to 50 just to because it's easier on the gas. So probably nine and a half to 10 hours is what it'll take to get to my sister's house. Um, so I'm going to probably take a nap after church and leave out about four in the morning or so and then... Actually, I may leave it earlier than that. I may leave at like 6 in the evening to get through North Carolina and then about midnight stop and take a two or three hour nap again and then drive on in. And just We'll see how I feel. I don't normally get tired when I sleep, but since I've got my bedroom behind my truck as I go, I might as well take advantage of that if I get tired. And we were having a discussion on tablespoons of butter and a stick, and people have given the answers and yes the wrapper has measuring lines as well and of course she threw it out excellent job um, I need one of those butter dishes with the lines hmm? hello Sophia I'm glad you made it in um, I hope you're having a great day. We're up to 28 people in here. That's pretty awesome. I hope everyone's having a great day. I hope it's not as cold where you are. Today's the first day it hasn't been. Well, yesterday it wasn't cold. Today's not cold. It's going to be cold again for the rest of the week. Um, I'm not going to eat. I, I On the drive down here, I fasted, and I will probably fast on the way back to Janet's house as well. If I end up getting hungry and don't think I'm going to make it, I will probably just pull into a McDonald's and get four or five, excuse me, four or five hamburger patties and call it done. But I'm not actually planning on eating anything that day. I don't have a favorite way to cook pork belly because I've never cooked a pork belly. That's one of the things I plan on experimenting with when I get back to my full kitchen in Omaha. Um, I have very limited resources here because I'm using the church's kitchen. So I don't, uh, I haven't actually ever cooked a pork belly, but I'm looking forward to trying it depending on, you know, what kind of a price I can get it for. Too bad Arizona isn't on the way to Ohio. I'd make you a ribeye. Yeah, Arizona is not on the way to anywhere from here. Um, it just isn't. See here. One life, too little. Good evening. Hello to you. I'm glad you're here. And we have a question. Lure of the North says, what about salmon and cod? Yeah, they're perfectly fine. They're fatty meats. Um, I would have it a couple of times a week at most, um, depending on where you're getting it and where you're sourcing it from. Um, mercury can be a problem in the larger fish, but I don't think it's um, I don't think it's a huge problem. Um, According to Professor K, you know, we want to be eating the muscle meat and associated fat of large ruminant animals as the basis for our diet. But um, having 
20 to 25 percent of your diet be salmon and cod as long as you don't have any reactions to it i see nothing wrong with it um salmon is a very fatty fish so the that's good the you get the omega-3s that way i've been getting my omega-3s by adding cans of tuna to my ground beef um just in case the grocery store meat that i've been buying is a little low on its omega-3 ratio I've been adding cans of tuna. So, but yeah, I think salmon and cod are perfectly fine. Um, I just wouldn't use those as the basis for your diet, but adding them in a couple times a week is, should be no problem at all. And Teresa says it's sunny in 66. Brenda, hello from Northeast Kansas. Northeast Kansas is very close to home for me because I'm from Omaha. John says, do you still have, and he corrected it, oh yeah, I still have, I gave a case away to a guy who stopped by the church, oh, this has been a month ago or so, he was, pastor was out of town, and he was, I mean, you could tell by what he was saying that he was looking for a handout or some food or something, so I went to the back of my truck and got him a case of Spam and said, here you go, have a case of Spam. And he seems like that. So I still have like five cases of spam, uh, half a can of the fake spam, which is the um, armor luncheon meat. Um, and that's the case I've been eating on right now. But yeah, I have like four or five cases of spam. I have two or three cases of canned um, sausage patties. Don't judge me. I have four or five cases of potted meat. Um, I have a couple cases of Vienna sausages. Um, I have a lot of meat in the back of my truck, just in case. It's all basically emergency food, or if something happens and the price of meat goes even wackier than it is now, I've got some store, some buildups that I can go for, oh, probably two or three months without actually having to buy any food. It's not the greatest stuff in the world. But eating all of that stuff that's in the back of my truck versus, you know, eating standard American diet, you know, a canned sausage patty is still way better than a bag of Cheetos. And salmon is an anti-inflammatory. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's anti-inflammatory, but it never hurts to have more. I mean... It just is. Nancy says you're looking good, Bob. Thank you, Nancy. I appreciate it. Um, I still have a long way to go, but we're getting there. When you get back to Omaha, will you have a bi-weekly cooking with Bob, Bob segment for us? Um, I don't know how often um, I'm going to do cooking stuff. I have some stuff that I'm going to experiment with. You know, I'm going to experiment with pemmican as trail food, which is basically just beef and fat. Um, and I'm going to experiment with some other stuff, but I don't want to give all that away. But I do have some plans to uh, to do some cooking. I don't know if it'll be bi-weekly or I'll just throw a little bit here and there. We'll see. Uh, maybe try wild Alaskan as tuna is a large fish. Yes. And Sophie says, I find tuna not fatty enough yet. But I, the the ground beef that I buy is uh, the 7327. And after I get the, the ground beef mostly done, I dump two cans of tuna into it. And the tuna soaks up 95% of the fat that's rendered out of my ground beef. So it ends up being a really good very fatty meal for me. But yeah, tuna by itself is probably not fatty enough. Um, you may want to, if you're just going to eat tuna out of the can, you may want to dump that can into a little bowl and mix it with some, of course, homemade like mayonnaise of some sort or just butter. Um, I don't use any of the mayonnaise stuff because I don't eat any plants at all, but I know a lot of people do. 
So if you like tuna, you may try some of that. Nancy, 12 degrees here in Minnesota. Got more snow yesterday. Happy spring. Yes, indeed. Um, I saw, a, I don't know if you even call it a meme. It was just somebody had typed out the words. Yay, spring is here. Dot, dot, dot. And now it's gone. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, wait, it's back again. Dot, dot, dot. Ah, it's gone again. Yeah, that's pretty much the way the weather's been here. Um, now, I don't know a whole lot about cod liver or fish oil supplements for your omegas. Um, but Dr. Barry is of the opinion that you should not um, be buying the supplements. He said buying a good cod liver, not cod liver oil, the actual cod liver that comes in a dark, you know, you know, a can so that the light doesn't get to it is perfectly fine. Um, but anything that has cod liver oil or fish oil supplements that comes in a capsule is partly rancid by the time it gets to you. And as we know from all of our previous discussions, that when the oils start to go rancid, that's what causes oxidative stress in the body. So you, if, if you want cod liver, great. I bought some cod liver because um, I was going to do what Dr. Barry said, and I mixed it up with some ground beef after I finally got past the smell of it. And it ruined an entire two pounds of ground beef for me. I did manage to choke it down, but I'm never doing that again. And I threw the rest of the cod liver away because that one can that I opened stunk up my kitchen for days. I can't stand the smell of it, but if you like it, go right ahead. It's, it's actually very good for you. Here. They've been having good sales on me. Ribeyes for $6.99. Great. I'm I'm ready to go home and hit some good meat prices because Omaha is usually much cheaper than the rest of the world for meat. I'll see when I get home because even if it has gone up by double since I've been gone, um, it will still be cheaper than what I've been paying down here for meat. Hello, Santa. How are you today? Oh, I missed your actual hello up there. Hello, meaty friends. And Mrs. Perfectly Imperfect Keto, for those of you watching, if you didn't know, she has a new YouTube channel. So after this live stream is over, go check her out. I've been enjoying her videos. Let's see here. Add some ice grass-fed butter to salmon or grass-fed sour cream dip. Yep. There you go. Um, I like grass-fed butter, but, you know, with the price of butter having gone wacky, I've just been buying the, because, you know, you have to watch the ingredients. And of all things, the Walmart El Cheapo, cheapest butter you can buy at Walmart, doesn't have anything extra in it. It's just cream. That's all it is. So I'm all for it. And if you buy the salted version, it's got salt in it. Yeah. Nice, not I said butter. I sort of knew that, but I said what you wrote anyway, because I'm an old man. Might be a silly question. When you add tuna to ground beef, which tuna do you use? Water? Oh, I use water, but I don't buy oil of any kind. I use, again, the cheapest stuff you can get from Walmart um, packed in water. Yeah, this last batch I bought was like I want to say 78 cents a can. And the reason you buy the cheaper tuna is, you know, you see these cans of tuna with the nice, you know, you open the can up and there's these nice big strips of, of tuna in there. This goes back to the whole mercury issue. When you see the really nice tuna that has the big slabs of tuna meat in there, well, they have to take those from bigger tuna that have been snacking on smaller fish. The ground up crappy stuff that's 78 cents a can packed in water at Walmart 
is all of the little fish and fish parts that they couldn't make into nice big tuna steaks. And they just run it through a grinder and throw it in the can. And there's, there's l much, much less chance of there being mercury poisoning because the smaller fish haven't had a chance to eat anything yet. So that's, uh, and that's what tuna I use. I never, I, even back when I wasn't doing this way of eating, when I bought cans of tuna, I've always bought it packed in water because I think tuna packed in oil is gross. Spring nearly here? Sometimes. Yes, indeed. And yes, Teresa says actual cod liver is king. I'm glad those of you that eat it like it. I, I can't do it. How did you end up with so much canned meat? Warehouse sale, Amazon closeout, or did you come across an abandoned semi on the highway? Um, well, I saw prices of meat going up back last fall, and I thought, well, this stuff's not going to get any cheaper, and it usually has a you know a three to ten year shelf life. So you know, I bought cases of food back when it was cheaper. It's much more expensive now. the The case of the cases of spam I bought, um, I want to say I paid like $18 for 12 cans. Um, and now I've, I have see on Amazon, I keep checking the prices because I'm always in the market for more spam. Um, last I saw a case of 12 was like $40. So we're talking almost, you know, from $2 a can to $4 a can. The price has doubled. Um, so that's how that's how I got it. I, I bought it last year, and I still have it. And as long as I can continue to get fresh meat within my budget, I don't need to eat it. But if prices go crazy, then I have backup supplies. And John says he's loving sardines these days. You know, I bought a package of sardines. I bought a whole case of sardines and was going to try them one night. And then I noticed there was some kind of a warning label. It had a warning thing on it. And I read up on the warning and it was probably just California being California. But I decided I wanted to look into it some more. I looked into it some more and the sardines that I bought, I ended up throwing them away. And I may or may not, um, I may or may not get sardines again, but probably not. I bought real cod liver. Yes, I, I bought, yeah, real cod liver. The processed stuff is crap, but I had real cod liver. It was Icelandic cod liver. It was actually a little on the expensive side. Um, and it, it still stunk up the house for days. I just, I, I'm, I'm not ever doing cod liver again, but for those of you that like it, it is a superfood. Go right ahead and eat some of it. Absolutely. And Teresa's saying the sardines are good. Well, excellent, Teresa. You can have my share of sardines also. Wild Alaskan salmon, sardines, yes. Mackerel, another small oily fish, yes. Yeah, well, that's uh, quite a bit too much work. And buying the cream, if you look at the price of buying cream that you can make butter out of at Walmart versus just buying their cheap butter, it's cheaper to buy the cheap butter. Yeah, Bart K has a couple. Of, actually, he put out a cooking video earlier. His recipe is called beef. And then he was debunking another one of these, uh, shall we say, the other side of the aisle doctors. And, um, yeah, I, I watched about 40 minutes of it and then had to come over here and answer some emails. It... Uh, it just never stops. I mean, the people on that other side of the head. Have you noticed, however, 
that Bart K has become much more watchable for those of you that find abrasive language offensive because of the new um, YouTube profanity rules. He can still use profanity, but he doesn't use it nearly as much because the the new rules are still kind of nebulous. Um, all the new rules say is that if you continue to use profanity throughout the video, you can't use it in the first like 12 seconds of the video or you instantly get demonetized. And then after that, all the rule says is that if it uses what we consider to be excessive profanity, then it will either be demonetized or have a much lower threshold for being allowed to run ads, which basically means demonetized without actually demonetizing it. So he's been very, very good about cutting his language back because he's obviously up to date on those rules as well. You're welcome, Lord of the North. I, I try to be nice to everybody, except maybe Craig. Craig deserves a little roughing up every now and then. Yes, she's grateful for Walmart butter because Sam's Club brand now has natural flavoring listed and never did before. Yeah, and I just, I mean, yes, I love the, the grass-fed butters that I've gotten in the past. They're really good. They're very tasty. I like them a lot, but they're really expensive. And since I don't actually eat butter like a lot of people do, I mean, I still, I, I don't. I mean, I'll put little pats of it alongside my meal and eat a pat of butter on, a top, on top of a big hunk of steak. But I don't, uh, I don't just grab a stick of butter and eat it. And for cooking and everything that I use it for, the basic Walmart butter is just fine. Um, I actually like it really well. It has a, it cooks really well. I mean, I use it on my, uh, when I do my stew meat, I cook that in the butter to get the stew meat all browned up. So it's sort of like sirloin tips and it browns that all up really well. I like it a lot. Butter is perfect. Why do people have to mess with it? The same reason they mess with everything, Teresa. Money. If they can put some kind of an additive in it that makes it so that it tastes the same and cooks the same and looks the same, but they can make it 5% cheaper, that's 5% more profit for them. And the cheaper foods here in the UK have higher fat content. Yeah. Yeah. And that's perfect because we want the higher fat content. I mean, I don't buy lean ground beef. If I buy lean ground beef, and even when I buy the big packs of pre-made 80-20 burgers that are already pressed out into burgers that all I have to do is thaw them out and, and heat them up in the skillet, those I add pats of butter to. But the the 20, the the 7327 beef I've been buying um, and then adding the tuna to it to soak up the grease. I don't feel like I need to add any fat to that at all. Let's see here. Yep, another brand called Challenge Butter also shows naturally. Natural, yeah, it's, it's out there everywhere. Absolutely. More expensive, less fat. And we as carnivores like the fat. Or at least we should like the fat. If you're not eating, and I think I talked about this the last time, it was Coach Bronson and uh, Kelly Hogan were having a discussion. And, you know, she identif identifies as a high-fat carnivore. And he identifies as a high-protein carnivore. But as they got to talking about what they eat, it turns out that it's all in the brain and how you think about it because they were eating within a couple percentage points the same macros. So it's just a matter of how you think about it. 
Okay, thanks, Bob. I bought the water pack tuna for years, but had bought the chicken of the sea or whatever name brand. But it looks for cheaper cans too. Yeah, and the chicken of the sea is fine. I think I still have a couple cans of that left out there because I got a really good price one day from Amazon. They were having a sale on it. Um, and chicken of the sea is fine too because that's chicken of the sea and star kissed. Those are the cheaper tunas that are made up from the small fish all ground up, packed in water. I mean, when you open those up, if you pull the lid off, it's just a bunch of little strands of, of tuna. Um, but yeah, it's... I like the Walmart's own brand. I wish I had a can here, but all that stuff's out in the truck that I could show you. But it's just their great value brand. It's, you know, like I said, I think it was 78 cents a can last time, which is still dirt cheap. And it's tasty. I mean, tuna is tuna when it comes right down to it. I, I've i never found a taste difference because I did buy the expensive the more expensive tunas once upon a time and I couldn't tell the difference. So I went back to cheap stuff. Spam light should be illegal. Absolutely. I never actually tried spam light. Um, Walmart makes their own brand of, of, they call it luncheon meat, but it's basically their knockoff of spam. Um, and I had, Heard somebody talking about it and thought, well, if it's just as good as spam, but a lot cheaper, I'm going to have to give this a try. So I ordered a couple of cans of it. And this was last summer in Omaha. I ordered a couple of cans of it. And it, it might have even been longer ago. It might have been when I was ordering groceries for down at mom's house. So it might have been when I was in New Orleans. I don't remember exactly what, but... They were out of the regular, so they substituted the light in my order, and it was absolutely wretched. I couldn't eat it. So I'm still waiting to, to try the actual Walmart, the great value luncheon meat. I haven't tried that yet, but I'm going to at some point. Yep. And that's just it. And the more sugar they add to it, the cheaper it is to make. But they, you know, because it tastes good, they can call, you know, call it whatever and charge you more for it because it tastes so good. Yes, sentence enhancers. But have you noticed that he's calmed down quite a bit in the last couple of weeks, Teresa? I know I certainly have. Does anyone know how to cook sardines in the air fryer? Um, I don't, but I'm guessing you just um, dump the water off of them, throw them in the air fryer, and let them run for a little bit. That's how I've ever air fried anything. It's actually not. Spam is not actually an unhealthy option. Um, is it as good as a ribeye steak? No, not by a long shot. But if your choice by budget or availability or whatever that thing is, spam versus standard American diet or standard Western diet, spam is so much better for you. Because if you read the ingredients, yes, there is a little bit of carb in there because there's a little bit of sugar in it. But depending on what batch you bought out of it's either one or two grams per serving so you can have a whole can for somewhere between six and ten carbs which is higher than i normally eat but it's not actually unhealthy compared to 95 percent of the food that's for sale in the grocery store all the stuff in the middle aisles now like i said is spam as good as you know having a ribeye steak or even a roast no it's not but, you know, I, I'm a retired guy on a fixed income. And while I've been eating more of the better meats now, you know, I lost my first 50 or 60 pounds on a diet of spam, bologna, hot dogs, potted meat, and ground beef. That's what I ate for the first several months. So 
it is still much, much better than um, standard Western diet. And the other thing, another reason why people don't like spam is the reason they don't like bacon and other stuff is because of nitrates and nitrites. And the research behind all of that is not is is beyond laughable. If you actually dig into it, you will find that there are two different drug companies out there working on a new blood pressure medicine based on nitrates. So perhaps nitrates aren't as bad for us as people said they were either. Can you put fat in an air fryer? I always did, but it melts out to the bottom. Now they make some inserts for those. Um, okay, there's that one. She cooks bacon in the air fryer all the time. And if you're that fat that collects at the bottom, if you, I didn't even usually strain it because I did bacon in the air fryer as well. I just dumped it into a jar and used it with the little pieces of stuff that fell off the bacon in it because that I call that flavor enhancer. I like Bart K's recent interview with No Carb Life. I agree with the sentence enhancers. Yeah, he did a good interview with, with him. I like all of Bart K's stuff. I'm, you know, I won't apologize for that. I think Bart K is a very smart man. And a lot of the characters that he plays are just that, characters that he plays. I've actually talked to him live over the interwebs once and um he's a very nice guy his if you listen to him and he explains it he does the you know the who's wrong on the interwebs and his his sweary channel and then he also does you know the suit and tie just give you the science type stuff and the sweary channel gets five and six times more views than the suit and tie channel just explaining the science so he he does it for clicks and i completely understand that thomas is here hello thomas i'm glad you made it and donna has made it hi bob and everyone i'm glad you made it here let's see here oh leanne made it hello leanne i heard the famous gold butter is being sued for bad toxic packaging and fibbing about grass-fed and finished. Yeah, we'll we'll see what happens with that. I uh, sad to see it, but we'll have to wait and see what uh, you know. We'll have we'll have to see what comes of that, which is why I still like the the basic Walmart butter. Yes, you do, Craig. You deserve all the abuse. And if anybody out there wants to jump jump in and pile onto Craig, feel free to give Craig all the abuse you want because Craig deserves it. Ah. Um, well, because, you know... All us carnivores, I, I, yes, I do eat a very limited menu. I eat mostly just beef, salt, and water. Um, but I am a retired guy on a fixed income. And if I were to pay the extra for grass-fed beef, I would be able to eat four, maybe five days a month. And I would have to fast the rest of the time. And I don't take my health lightly, but the way I've been doing it, um, let's see here. Just a quick rundown. Besides 140 pounds gone, arthritis 90% better, spinal spinosis 90% better. Um, my fatty liver is gone. My type two diabetes is gone. My stage one chronic kidney disease is gone. I could barely stand for two and a half minutes without severe pain before I started this way of eating. And now I'm walking an average of six and a half miles a day. Um, so while, yes, my health is not something to take lightly um, and is the grass-fed, grass-finished beef better? Absolutely. But 
the thing you have to look at is if you t look at the chemical breakdowns between feedlot a feedlot steak and a grass finished steak the difference between those two in nutrient content is depending on which chart you look at it's between 9 and 11% better for the grass fed to me that 9 to 11% better does not equate to four to six times the price. And for now, now again, I'm only 10 and a half months into this. I can't tell you what's going to happen another year down the line. But for now, I'm getting all of the results I need on the way I've been eating. At some point, that might have to change. But for now, I'm getting plenty of nutrition from the feedlot beef which is what I have always bought anyway because I'm from Nebraska. Let's see here. Oh, that's, uh, let's see here. Not in mind. Let's see here. Yeah, so it's a myth that fat can't be cooked in air fryer then. Yes, absolutely, Sophia, it's a myth. Let's see here. Remnants are herbivores meant to eat grass, hence the omega profile that's so critical. Yeah, the but again, the the omega profile is while it may not be as good in grocery store meat, it's still there. The only reason I've been adding tuna to my ground beef is because I stopped buying the good ground beef and bought the and I'm now buying the cheaper stuff that comes in little plastic tubes. So I don't know where that comes from. Therefore, I'm adding a little bit of tuna to it to get to up the omega-3. But uh, that's... If you argue that ruminants are herbivores. But, you know, they are meant to eat grass. But, you know, even feedlot beef, they spend 80 to 85% of their life eating grass. It's just that last... 15 to 20 percent where they get sent to the feedlot to be fattened up for sale and believe me as much as the fda and all of the regulatory agents are all over feedlots on a daily basis if they were making the meat truly unhealthy they would be shut down it's just not quite as good it's here Tampa Jan is here. Sorry I'm late. Hi, Tampa Jan. Um, glad to see you. You are here. I don't know if you're still at rehab or have made it to your home, but I'm glad you made it into the chat. And we've got about eight minutes yet to go here. Thanks for all the... You're welcome. And everybody's saying hello to Tampa Jan, which is good. Excellent. Let's see here. The Kroger tuna is 88 cents and works. Yep, Kroger. We don't actually have Kroger's in Omaha. We have Baker's, and Baker's used to be a really great local grocery store. I used to go there for the produce. Um, but they got bought out by Kroger's when Mr. Baker died, and I don't mind that so much. Their produce went way downhill, but some of the stuff in cans that I grew up on back in Ohio is now available in Omaha. Twin Brook Acres is here. Can I start over? Yes, I will start over just for you next Friday at 415 Central, 515 Eastern. But I'm glad you made it. No air fryers for no fat diet agenda. Yeah, they're just, they, I don't know what's going on over in the UK. And everybody's saying hello to Rick. I'm glad he's here. And I heard boar head has clean deli meat. Anyone know? Uh, I I don't know about boar's head, but I that's the other thing that I forgot to mention that I ate early and do still occasionally buy. You know, just basic grocery store um, meat, lunch meat, 
Um, primarily, I'll buy the roast beef, the turkey, or the ham. But then I'll buy the Hormel bags of salami and pepperoni and kind of make little meat roll-ups out of them. Great food. Oh, and that's a talk to Sophia. Let's see here. It's a pretty clean sauna. They have a book of nutrition info on the counter. I'm not sure what they're talking about, but I will leave that at. Uh, spam, like I said, spam is better than a bag of Cheetos. Spam is, if you look at the ingredients, is mostly just ground up pork. It's just ground up pork, and pork is fine. Like pork is the number one meat eaten in the world. Um, so. While it's not as good as steak or just beef, if it's a choice between eating Spam or eating something completely unhealthy, I'll take the Spam. And I actually like Spam. I grew up on Spam and fried bologna sandwiches and all that stuff. And, you know, as long as what you're doing is working for you, there's no reason to change. That's kind of the tagline of my channel. Let's see here. Okay, putting on weight and had poor results on her lab work. My guess is that um, she was eating a bunch of, you know, keto. Because, you know, all those keto cookies and snacks and breads and everything are so good for you. Did you know there's no regulations at all on putting keto on a label? So, you know... You could, you know, White Castles, they, you know, they freeze those up and sell them to grocery stores in 6 and 12 and 24 packs. They could put keto on the label and it would be perfectly legal. Yeah, and well, I covered that already. There's nothing wrong with nitrates. In fact, they're working on a blood pressure medicine based around nitrates and sodium nitrate. That's complete and total myth. If you look at the actual science that put that stuff out there, it's it's absolutely it's it's worse than worthless. Um, go to Dr. Barry's channel and type go to YouTube search engine and type in Dr. Barry nitrates, and he has a whole video explaining it to you. Um, it's worth it's worth watching into, and I believe um, Dr. Chafee has one as well. I don't do science real well. I would love to explain it to you. All I know is that I've been told not only are they not bad for you, but there are two different companies in trial phases right now doing blood pressure medicines based on nitrates. Uh, chunk light is correct tuna to buy. Albacore is larger fish with the mercury. The oil packed tuna is usually soybean or canola oil packed in water is the only way to go. Absolutely right. Trying to scroll through here pretty quick to see if I've missed anything super important because we're coming up on that time already. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Ah, yes. Teresa linked that um, for you there. See here, we make nitrates every time we eat nitrates being bad for us. Complete myth, according to Dr. Barry. Absolutely. And better Shannon, hello. And she also uses Walmart butter. I love Walmart butter. Let's see here. What else here? Yep. We don't do grass-fed. Even though we save some money, we can get more quantity of beef that's not grass-fed. I'm all for more bang for my buck. And, you know, like I said, at some point I might have to, you know, if I if I encounter a problem at some point, I will probably try some some grass-fed. But right now I just do not, do not see the 
initial cost. You know, if I was a doctor like Dr. Sean Baker or Dr. Anthony Chafee and could afford to have, you know, an entire refrigerator full of two pound tomahawk ribeyes, then of course that's what I would eat. But, you know, I could have one of those a, uh, a month, maybe two, and I'd have to fast the rest of the month because two of those blow my entire budget. here yeah but how much per pound is that from wild fork because the ground beef i'm buying from walmart while it's not the quality is like 278 i think a pound was the last i paid for it might have been a little over three dollars and again Everyone talking about it, you have to remember, I'm on a very limited budget. I am retired. And I had to retire about 10 years earlier than I thought I was going to retire because I ended up having heart surgery. And I thought I was going to get to go back to work and did not get to go back to work. So, you know, I, I have a very limited retirement budget and I have to cut corners everywhere I can. Okay, no, we can't. Uh... Sorry, we can't have people telling other people in the chat that they're wrong. Um... Grateful Keel in the UK, the tin has wild caught. I have to take the word for it. Yeah, my gout's gone too. Um, but anyway, we are beyond time by just a little bit. Thanks for joining me today, everyone. Um, I hope everyone got a little something out of this. Um, but have a great day, everyone. Don't forget to get out there and be 1% better today. And I will see you tomorrow.